On October 20th, 2025, fresh amateur images of interstellar comet 3I slash Atlas shattered expectations. No classic glowing tail, but a jet aimed directly at the sun, defying every rule in NASA's cometary playbook. If these anomalies are genuine signals, not artifacts, they raise the stakes for the upcoming perihelion. Are we witnessing exotic natural physics or evidence of something built? Right now, the raw data confronts us with questions no official explanation can dismiss, and the next eight days may change what we believe is possible in our own solar system. Carla Esteva's name first appeared in a late-night astronomy forum post, timestamped October 20, 2025, at 0316 UTC. The attached file wasn't a glossy composite or a processed highlight, but a raw FITS frame straight from her H-alpha solar rig. The coordinates matched NASA's official tracking for 3i slash ATLAS right ascension. 13 hours, 48 minutes, 57.33 seconds. Declination, minus 8 degrees, 25 minutes, 54.3 seconds. And the metadata logged the exposure at 11.48 p.m. local time in northern Chile. Estevez's observatory isn't a professional dome, but a converted farm outbuilding outside Vicuña, Vicuña, perched beneath the southern sky's clearest belt. Her equipment, a 150mm refractor fitted with a narrow band H-alpha filter and cooled CMOS camera, is tuned for solar outbursts, not comet hunting. Yet on this night, it captured something no one expected. It's not just a viral anomaly, it's a documented data point, captured by a known observer under reproducible conditions. The credibility of what's in the frame now rests not on rumors, but on a foundation of verifiable facts. Comets earn their reputation as cosmic showmen through a simple physical process. Sunlight heats volatile ices, causing them to sublimate and vent gas and dust into space. This outflow forms a coma, a fuzzy envelope around the nucleus, and under the pressure of sunlight and the solar wind, two tails. The dust tail, broad and curved, points away from the sun, shaped by radiation pressure. The ion tail, narrow and straight, is swept directly anti-solar by charged particles streaming from the sun. No matter the comet's path, these tails almost always extend away from the solar glare. Even when a comet's orbit brings it nearly between Earth and the sun, Geometry may cause the tail to appear shortened or even overlap the coma, but the underlying physics remains. Outgassing pushes material outward, sunlight and solar wind push it back. Estevez's raw frame, however, challenges this template. The nucleus appears as a sharply defined dark spot, expected in an inverted palette, but the surrounding coma is unusually faint. Most striking is a narrow, collimated feature extending sunward, not anti-solar. Instead of a classic tail swept behind, the image reveals a jet that seems to point straight at the sun's coordinates. The rest of the field shows no obvious broad tail, no fan of dust or ionized gas stretching away as textbooks predict. For seasoned comet images, this is a jarring sight. The expected anti-solar tail is absent, replaced by a structure that defies the rules of solar-driven sublimation. The solar sublimation model predicts that as a comet nears the sun, activity increases, the coma brightens, and tails grow more prominent. Even at low resolution, a standard comet would display a luminous coma and a visible tail, especially with a 60-second integration and excellent sky conditions. Here, the coma is minimal, and the only prominent feature is a jet that runs counter to the expected direction. If this were a photographic artifact, hot pixels, sensor streaks, or internal reflections. It would lack the sharp alignment with the sun's position and would not persist across independent downloads and processing attempts. The jet's structure is too regular, too consistent with the comet's orientation to dismiss as random noise or stacking error. Standard explanations struggle to account for what the image presents. An anti-tail caused by projection effects can sometimes appear to point sunward, but such features are usually broad, diffuse, and only occur when the Earth crosses the comet's orbital plane. Estevez's image shows a tightly focused jet, not a wide dust sheet. Atmospheric seeing, which can blur or distort faint detail, was excellent during the exposure, 
as confirmed by the observatory's logs. The tracking was precise, with no drift to smear the feature. Differential sublimation, where unusual ices or organics erupt from a sunward-facing vent, could, in theory, produce a jet, but this would not explain the lack of a standard tail or the faintness of the coma. No professional observatory has released a contemporaneous image to confirm or refute the absence of a classic anti-solar tail at this epoch. Earlier Hubble frames from July showed a typical dust plume and hints of a tail, but by October 20th, only this amateur snapshot exists. The lack of corroborating data leaves the field open. Is this a fleeting natural phenomenon, a sign of exotic comet chemistry, or something that bends the rules of comet physics? For now, Estevez's frame stands as both a challenge and an invitation, demanding a closer look at what comets can and perhaps cannot do. Every claim of cometary weirdness gets run through a gauntlet of natural explanations before anyone reaches for new physics. The first checkpoint is geometry. Sometimes, what looks like a sunward jet is just an anti-tail, dust left in the comet's orbital plane that, from Earth's vantage, appears to stretch toward the Sun. Anti-tails only materialize when the viewing angle is just right, usually as Earth crosses the comet's orbital plane. Modeling 3 I slash Atlas's position on October 20th, the orbital plane was tilted nearly edge-on, but not perfectly aligned. The threshold for a strong anti-tail effect, Earth within a degree or two of the comet's plane, wasn't quite met. Even if projection played a role, anti-tails are broad and diffuse, not sharply collimated like the feature in Estevez's frame. Next comes the question of activity cycles. Comets are notoriously fickle, flaring up or fading out as sunlight unlocks pockets of volatile ices. Short-lived jets can erupt from vents facing the sun, but these events are usually chaotic. A sunward jet might appear if a fresh patch of volatile material was suddenly exposed, but such vents rarely last more than a few hours or days before shifting or fading. The persistence of the sun-facing feature across multiple exposures, separated by several hours and processed by independent analysts, complicates the transient jet scenario. If this were a fleeting outburst, the structure should have changed or vanished in the time between exposures. Atmospheric distortion always gets a look. Poor seeing can blur or stretch features, but Estevez's logs show steady, sub-arc-second conditions. The field stars in the frame are round and unsmeared, matching the point spread function expected for the telescope and camera. If the jet were a seeing artifact, it would show up in the stars too, not just the comet. Similarly, sensor quirks, hot pixels, readout streaks don't line up with the comet's motion or orientation, and the calibration frames are clean. Volatile chemistry is another candidate. Standard comets are driven by water ice, but 3 pi i slash atlas has hinted at an outsized role for carbon dioxide and exotic organics. Spectra from August and September showed a carbon dioxide to water ratio approaching 8 to 1, one of the highest ever recorded. If a sunward vent was dominated by carbon dioxide or a metal organic compound, it could produce a jet with different brightness and structure than a typical water-driven outflow. But this doesn't explain the minimal coma or the absence of a classic anti-solar tail. Even in carbon dioxide-rich comets, sunlight and solar wind should still push dust and gas away from the sun, forming a visible tail. The lack of such a feature remains a sticking point. Replication is the final hurdle. Attempts to reproduce the sunward jet using synthetic data, different stacking methods, and a range of calibration frames have failed to create anything with the same sharpness and alignment. As Dr. Jonah Liu, a comet physicist, put it, we've seen anti-tails, we've seen transient jets, but we haven't seen this exact combination, collimated, sun-facing, and persistent, without a tail. It's not impossible, but it's not in the playbook. After running the checklist, several natural explanations fall short. Geometry can't fully account for the feature's shape. Transient activity doesn't explain its persistence. Volatile chemistry offers hints, but not a complete answer. Atmospheric and instrumental artifacts are ruled out by the logs and calibration. The field narrows, but the case isn't closed. What's left is a growing list of anomalies, each demanding further scrutiny. Spectroscopic analysis of 3i-atlas 
has turned up results that push the limits of what comet science can comfortably explain. The carbon dioxide to water ratio, measured at nearly 8 to 1, stands among the highest ever recorded, not just for interstellar objects, but for any comet seen in the solar system. This level of carbon dioxide dominance suggests a nucleus with a chemistry far removed from the water-rich bodies that usually pass through the inner planets. Yet even this doesn't capture the full picture. Preliminary spectra from August and September hinted at the presence of nickel, with a conspicuous absence of iron lines. In typical cometry material, iron outnumbers nickel by orders of magnitude. Here, the suggestion, still awaiting confirmation from high-resolution follow-up, is of a nickel-rich iron-poor outflow, a pattern that has no precedent among known comets. Orbit modeling adds to the puzzle. 3. I slash Atlas follows a retrograde, ecliptic-aligned path, cutting against the grain of solar system traffic. Its estimated mass and size, derived from photometric modeling and gravitational influence, place it at the upper end for interstellar visitors. These numbers alone would make it an object of intense study. But the persistent, sun-facing jet, captured in multiple independent reductions, raises a scenario that stretches natural explanations thin. If this feature is real and not an artifact, it resembles what some engineers have called a forward jet or thermal shield, a structure that, in theory, could serve to manage heat or orientation for a moving body. Dr. Jonah Liu, who led early spectroscopic work, put it plainly. The compositional signatures defy standard models. The nickel lines, the carbon dioxide dominance, these aren't things we expect from a comet, interstellar or not. For now, the data stack up as a challenge to textbook physics. The extraordinary possibility of a jet engineered for a purpose remains just that, a possibility demanding extraordinary evidence. As perihelion approaches on October 29th, every new observation is scrutinized, every anomaly logged. The next eight days will test the limits of both natural models and imagination. Perihelion for 3i slash Atlas arrives on October 29th, hidden behind the sun from Earth's point of view. This timing isn't just a curiosity, it's the one moment when any sudden change, natural or otherwise, could pass undetected by ground telescopes. For the next week, the only eyes on the comet belong to spaceborne instruments. SOHO's LASCO coronagraph and the Parker Solar Probe offer the best vantage, each with different fields of view and sensitivity. SOHO can catch large-scale outbursts or fragmentations, while Parker, if its telemetry window and orientation allow, might record high-cadence brightness changes or unexpected ejecta. Their data will be patchy, sometimes delayed, and often filtered for solar safety. But they remain the only available monitors as 3. I slash Atlas swings through the Oberth window, a period when a close solar pass enables the greatest change in energy for any maneuver, whether by nature or design. Once the comet emerges from conjunction, the watch list sharpens. Photometry, careful tracking of the comet's brightness, becomes the first line of evidence. A sudden jump could signal an outburst or fragmentation. A flat or fading curve, especially with no tail growth, would be unusual for a post-perihelion comet. Morphology is next. Does a classic anti-solar tail appear? Is there a persistent jet, or do new structures emerge? Fragmentation, the appearance of companions, or even small but measurable shifts in trajectory, all are clues that can be tracked from November onward using both amateur and professional equipment. Interpreting these changes demands caution. Image processing choices, stacking, palette inversion, background subtraction can create or erase faint features. A jet visible in one reduction may vanish in another. The difference between a real outburst and a processing artifact comes down to reproducibility and peer review. As new data arrives, the most reliable approach is to compare independent reductions, check calibration logs, and weigh each anomaly against the established physics of comet behavior. In the weeks after perihelion, the story of 3COM-I slash Atlas will be written not just by what is seen, but by how it is measured, checked, and understood. No peer-reviewed professional report has yet explained this jet's structure. As 3I slash Atlas reaches perihelion on October 29th, 
All ground-based scopes lose visibility, leaving only SOHO and Parker Solar Probe to observe. The next decisive evidence is expected in early November, when the object emerges from conjunction. Until then, the true nature of 3Com I slash Atlas, natural or otherwise, remains unresolved. The facts now point to a critical window. Eight days to perihelion, and the world is watching for answers.